Yo, what's going on guys? We're looking at my Terry Mon deck for the BT16 format. That is coming up very soon. So let's get into what I'm playing and why. Four Gummy Mon off the uh, bat. Now, of course, you could play four of this egg instead. The plus a thousand while suspended is very good in this deck. I always find that draw power is just so important though, because sometimes you can't proc your double Typhoon or because you don't have a Terry Mon or sometimes you don't have a rookie to put on the stack so Willis loses value. That might sound a bit redundant, but if you played the deck and you, you know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments because I, I don't find anyone talks about this, but Willis and Double Typhoon can honestly sometimes be dead cards as you don't have the card to play off them, which feels really, really bad. All right, the deck lists on Project or Seal seem to do options first, so I guess we'll start with that. In Potential Discovered, you can trigger this really easily thanks to Double Typhoon playing out a body for free. Obviously, you want to play out the Searching Terriamons, but it doesn't really matter because essentially you're just going to tap it for double uh, for Hidden Potential. So you can then go into your Rapids for pretty much free, which is uh, insane. Plus, you can do it on your level fours, so that's really nuts, right? You can turn to go to Omega for literally free. Heaven's Judgment and Giant Missile should be grouped together, but they've split them up. Just two different removal options. One that's going to count the colors you have, as you notice, um, both our level sixes have two different top end colors. Our level fours are yellow and our level five is black. So there's a lot of yellow and black in here to go with the green, which means you're always able to activate this card, but it's just like, how many colors can you get? Don't forget this card is a neg 6k on its own, and then it counts the colors. For example, if I had Heaven's Judgment and I had Mega Gargamon Ace, it would be Neg 18 because it's counting itself and then green and then black. And if I did happen to have a yellow source, there would be another uh, 6k on top of that as well. That would be going up to Neg 24k. But yeah, Heaven's is kind of insane and it can really help you wipe out those wide boards and you can split up the 6ks where you like, so it's really cool. Giant Missile, on the other hand, ironically is searchable through agility training. Not that, I don't know if you'll ever add it, but you might. You can suspend an opponent's Digimon, then you can put a suspended Digimon on the bottom of the deck, then one of their Digimon card on suspend. Now it's important to note, like Mega Gargo Ace, his effects don't have to be the same target. You can suspend a Digimon, return a different suspended Digimon, and then pick something that's not even suspended and say it can't unsuspend. And the reason you might do that is it might have its own effect to restand itself after it attacks or something like that. You can pick like a third target in this case, or you might have something, you know, tapped already that you'd like to lock down. So I don't know, I find Giant Missile actually really good because it's essentially three effects in one and kind of power creeps um, Grand Soul. There's something I wanted to say. Oh yeah, of course, Heaven's Judgment synergizes well with the Rapid Mons as they all DP Neg, so you just get even more DP Neg, right? So you can pretty much out anything with just a level four Rapid Mon and Heaven's or a level four Rapid Mon and Rapid X, but we'll get to that later. Agility training it too, because it's just pretty good to, you know, grab yourself a green tamer if you're missing it, or grab yourself one of the pieces you're missing. Only things you can't add are the Heavens and the Death X, which I don't think is the worst thing, and if you wanted to play a Fire Rocket in this Death X slot, that's what I would do if you wanted a bit of aggression. But I find the deck needs Fire Rocket now in BT15, by BT16, you've got Rapid X, and you've got so much board control with Terriamon X as well. Like, you don't actually need the sec checks, in my opinion, anymore. But you know what? We'll find out more when we test the format. I have been testing online, and this is kind of my current thoughts. But yeah, agility is just, you know, staple. Um, double Typhoon of 4, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Cards a sec bob. Our tamers, I've gone for Henry Wong Memory Setter with the Triple Willis and the Mimi. This is uh, replicating the second place Terriamon deck from the Australian Oceanic Regional. I think this ratio is really good for a number of reasons. Mimi can be a little dead if you've already Willis'd out all your eggs, but in a build with no Ukomon, it will probably be fine. Um, Henry putting you to three and being searchable is nice. And then obviously Willis can help you reduce further costs from there, but being put to three is actually kind of important in this deck. Like most decks, three is normally a magic number here. So um, there's a couple of numbers that with one Willis and like one Henry, you can, you know, hit a really nice play. Anyway, you know, I, I don't think our team is lots of the best, to be honest, but it's all we really got to work with. Willis has definitely, you know, become better thanks to this Terriamon. But anyway, the Terriamon X anybody. This guy is a bit of a menace. I'm not maxing out on it, you probably know. So I got three, and there's a couple of reasons for that. His Inheritable is amazing because it, uh, it gives you piercing. It's not letting me scroll to that effect right now. Let's see if I can get it on screen. There we go. So he gives you piercing on a Gargo Rapid, which of course is your entire deck, uh, except if you go into Death X randomly. So that's just insane on its own. But he also reduces the cost of Evo by one, which is always nice as well, if it's into a Gargo Rapid once again. Um, that's kind of insane too, because you know, you're only going into Gargo Rapids. This Rapid will go on this Terriamon for two, this one will still go on for three because this card uh, looks for Terriamon in name exactly while this card looks for, sorry, this card looks for Terriamon as your name. This card looks for Terriamon in the name. So um, it's just a, you know, kind of a matter of this coming out in BT8 and this thing 
it's not a deck 70. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, a reflection of the times, but um, the black box is normally good anyway. This could, of course, can Digivolve on Gummy or Terrier for zero, which is interesting because the only gummies we have are green. Unless they're hinting that there could be different colored gummies in future. Um, which, I don't know, I, I can't see Gummy Mon being anything but green, but... And once again, if you just have way too many Terrier Mons in your hand, great, you can just slap this on top of one of them after you've searched or something, it's really nice. So we play uh, the Searcher Terrier Mons at 8. This one looks at top 5 and just adds any Gargo Rapid, so it looks real deep and gets you a piece. This one looks uh, just a 4, but it grabs a Henry Wong and a 2-color green card, yeah! 2-color green card, so it can add stuff like Mega Death. Not that we're playing a blue source, but you get what I mean. Like, there's a lot of potential for this card to add good stuff in future too. Sometimes it's a shame that these options aren't like two color because you can't grab them, but obviously then it'd be harder to use. But you get what I'm saying? Obviously you can grab anything in your line because everything in your line is two color. That's kind of the point. But yeah, I think there's a lot of potential for this Terramon going forward if there's any better Henrys, because right now all the Henrys are kind of mid. If there's better Henrys, great. And if there's better two color cards, amazing. We can search them. So yeah, this Terrymon got that potential. Obviously it has the Alliance effect, uh, but we don't actually utilize that in this build. There's not even a Lotmon or anything with Alliance. Um, but that's another kind of cut you could do. You could cut a Terrymon X for a Lotmon. But once again, Terrymon X, I don't know, I think it just replaces the Lotmon. You don't really need the Sec Plus 1 if you're getting piercing in my opinion. But yeah. Um, the new Terrymon from the Structure Deck is just insane still. Like, playing that Lotmon or in this case, only a green team for two less, is just great. It makes Willis a one cost, which it's like the little Ukomon engine in this deck, this Terrymon and this Willis. Uh, it's still one memory and two cards, so it's still worse, but um, you know, you, you work with what you got. You do need green tamers for this rapid one to really be powerful, so it makes sense why you want to play those green tamers out. And of course, if you have either of these green tamers, you're able to, you know, start your turn of three or reduce your evolution cost by one, which you know, that's going to be really good with all of these cards that are quite expensive to evolve into. Alright, we're on to the level 4 slots. The 8 gold rapids, there's nothing else to play guys, they're just that good. I don't think you need to play any Gargomons or anything else. I know some people like to play the jamming Gargomon, sure. Don't really think you need it. This card does everything you want and you can combo it with Rapid X, Mega Gargomon Ace, Rapid Level 5, Heaven's Judgment and just absolutely dismantle a board. This Rapid Mon puts Neg 5k on three of your opponents suspended um, and then having like Heaven's or uh, Rapid X to follow up is just like GG, like you just wipe the field. I don't know, these cards are insane and then we get to the higher cards and they just keep getting more insane. Now you'll notice we're playing uh, 8 Megas, which might seem like a very high number, but you have to consider that our level 5 slot and our level 4 slot are essentially the same slot here. We've kind of got, uh, what, 8, 12, level 5 slash 4s, and our 6s go on both of them. So it, it doesn't really matter how many 6s we play, like you could definitely clog on the 6s here, I'm not saying you couldn't, um, but they're that good I think you have to play 4 and 4. Until I test more and I maybe go, okay, Maybe we can drop one of these or one of these. But I really think you want the 4 and 4 because, you know, every search you play will grab you one. And you just need them. You need them all the time. Before we just had Mega Gargamon Ace and it was so hard to play when this was at the bottom of your deck and you couldn't find it. You're playing your searches and your Double Typhoons and you're not finding it. Now you can at least find Rapid X and find Solace in the fact that, you know, you can go into this and then this. And you've already got a devastating board because if you can go, you know, a bunch of neg DP on evolution from the rapid and then the rapid X, the permanent neg four on the opponent's board puts a lot of pressure. It really changes how they play the game. Decks like Bloom Lord, decks like Numamon, decks like Red Hybrid essentially cannot play the game. They have to go up their line instead of, you know, doing their smaller hybrid or rookie rush strategies. Anything with Ukomon in it just dies in the arse, so. This card is really a great check to the cancer that Ukomon brought to the game. Uh, I am also an Ukomon enjoyer and an abuser, but I'm just saying, I think that Ukomon should probably go, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So I like that this card is like a nice check to that. Now the Rapid Level 5 is absolutely sensational. You'll notice in my list that I took to the uh, Oceanic, I played this at 2. Um, I was considering bumping it up to 3 before the event, and man, do I wish I put it to 3 or 4, because this card is just sensational. Not only does it provide you with D Digivolve in a deck where, you know, DP reduction and D Digivolve can synergize very well, especially in like an armor mirror match, but it also just gets protection as long as you have that green tamer. There are games you don't have that green tamer out and it feels really bad, and you think, oh, maybe I should play more green tamers, but you really can't because the green tamers are just not great. I know that sounds a bit ironic considering like Mimi's a very good tamer and has been since the start of the game, but I think tamers nowadays are just 
way better than these guys. Um, you know, you've got stuff like Cool Boy is kind of dated now, but it's still an amazing card. Analog Youth is just sensational, anything purple. Um, Davis being a searcher, and the new three drop Davis in armor is sensational. There's a lot of tamers where it's just gain one to start of your turn and they do something on play as well. And I think those tamers get you their value immediately and, you know, moving forward. And Willis can kind of do that if you have the egg slot free and if it doesn't pass turn. So Willis needs a lot to go right for it to be good. You need to have a three in hand. You need to have uh, a spare digi egg slot. Or you need to have nothing flipped in your egg slot. And you need to, you know, play it and not pass turn. So you need, either need to have this Terry or you need to have three memory, which the memory centers can help with. So Willis is kind of like a way worse version of the new Davis that everyone plays. So obviously memory center Davis is sensational, but this is the Davis I'm referring to. Uh, if you have a Digimon free and trade, start a main phase, gain a memory. So obviously promotion, you gain a memory, anything on field, you gain a memory. Uh, the whole deck's free, so, you know, you're gaining that memory most of the time. Um, on play, play a Vmon or Digivolve into an X Vmon. Both very good effects. You obviously only utilize the player Vmon in this deck, but that is just sensational. Um, and Willis is sort of that, but it needs a lot more to go right. Davis just needs a Vmon in your hand. That's it. Willis needs a Terriamon in your hand, a, a spare egg slot, and the memory to not pass turn. Because otherwise, you flip an egg and you pass turn. What does that do? Nothing. It's, it's a bit of a joke. So you really need like this Terry one out to make the Willis cost one. And then you need another Terry one to put on the stack. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 it's not as good as people make out Willis to be. And I think if you played Willis since release from BT8, you would know that. This Terry one obviously makes it a lot better, but yeah, that's pretty much the deck list. I think the top end is super important and you've got to play it. I think the level fours are super important and you just got to max on them. And I've got the Death X in there as my, like, spicy tech. Now, there's other cards we can talk about playing as well. And if you want to go down this route, absolutely. There is armor cards that can actually be a nice niche in this deck, depending on the format. Now, I played Plasma Shot when I went to the regional for the Numemon matchup. I didn't burst Numemon. But overall, I found it quite lackluster. It's a Neg 4K to something. And then all of your opponent's Digimon get a Neg 1000 for every card with armor in its trash. The idea was... You, um, you know, delete the Numemon board, thanks to going into a Rapid and negging them a bunch, and then go on a Plasma Shot. So if they've played anything back, it dies, and this is a permanent Neg 1000 for everything in your trash. So if you at least have one to two armors in your trash, you know, Neg 2k till the end of your opponent's turn. So all their Numemon effects that try to replay Numemons and stuff, you know, they're just going to get insta-deleted. Problem is... If they just go on a Platinum Numemon, you know, it doesn't do anything then. But you force them to do that. You force them to not go into like a Numa X or float into any of the other Numas, which was the whole idea behind it. And in testing against Numemon, when I did see this, even though it was a one-off, um, it was really good. So I thought, well, I'll play the one. Kind of just a dead card. I probably would have just played Heavens instead. Um, yes, Heavens cost a lot more, but uh, I don't know. I think it might have just been a better call on the day. I still did on the day combo Rapid Mon DP Negs and Plasma Shot DP Negs to like pass turn in a memory efficient way and wipe the field. So it wasn't bad, but I, it was never as like broken as say something like Heavens. Um, and then we have Fire Rocket. Now, I don't think we need Fire Rocket and you definitely don't need Lightning Blade anymore because this Terriamon here gives piercing to the whole deck. Um, obviously, you won't see it all the time, but... Uh, oh, an important thing about this Terrymon, you can't play it off Double Typhoon. Double Typhoon has to play a Terrymon or a Lopmon. Perfect named. Terrymon X Anybody is not that. He is Terrymon X Anybody. So another reason he's the lowest Terrymon is you can't play him off Double Typhoon. Um, super random, just thought I'd add that in for anyone wondering. So Fire Rocket, obviously good aggression card, but I don't know, I kind of feel like with the piercing, you don't really need it. Uh, you play like a more control style build now because you've got the Rapid X and you can play control. You literally put the opponent under these weird conditions where if a Digimon dies, you gain two memory, and everything's negged by four if it's suspended. And if they try to attack into this, you can blast into this. Yeah, you can just put Mega Gargamon Ace on top of your Rapid X. It's sensational, and then you obviously restand and can block, and it's very silly. So there's a lot of synergy here, even with these cards. Even though this has armor purge, this isn't an armor card in trait, only the level fours are armor. So you can't actually Fire Rocket or Lightning Blade with, say, oh, you can Lightning Blade because it's green. But you can't Fire Rocket with this Rapid X Anybody, unfortunately, which is a little bit rough, but that's how it is. Now, the Armor Texture cards don't work at all in this deck because they need a level 3 with free and all the turn ones are vaccine. So uh, just write this card off. Uh, you could play this if you're playing like a Magna X, but 
I would say what you want is, if you wanted to play Awakening, you'd probably just play this, the Sparkle of Fate. Um, this lets you pick a Gargo Rapid. Did you evolve into any other Gargo Rapid without paying the cost? And if you did evolve by this effect, you can't have your DP reduced by the opponent till the end of the turn. So super good in the mirror and against like Yellow Vaccine and anything silly like that. Um, but that's kind of about it. Now, if you do have a green Digimon, you can use this card without needing any other requirements. I'm just going to zoom out because we can't actually read that security effect. So the security effect is you can play a level 3 with Terriamon in name from hand or trash without paying the cost, then add this to hand. So pretty much the exact copy of the Vmon card. Um, I think it's just slightly worse because in Magna, you can like go into Magna X, which is just crazy. Or you can go into... What's it call it? The regular Magna from BTA and re-stand and like get lethal with it. And obviously having your DP not reduced when you're in the big Magna X state is crazy. But in this deck, like you're just an 11k guy. It's it's not as oppressive, I feel. Now obviously the niche here is you can any Gargo or Rapid in name. So you could even use the Ace and use Sparkle of Fate and go into Rapid X. That's kind of funny. But I don't think you'll ever do it. The other thing is it's yellow, which I know the Magnamon card's also yellow, but you know, you're gonna bottom deck it a lot as well, which happens in Magna as well. But it's just a thing I thought I'd point out. Like, this could be a really nice one of though. If you wanted to play the one Sparkle of Fate, I wouldn't blame you. It's very cool. And uh, I do think it fits a nice niche where, you know, you can no longer be DP reduced. So in the Terriamon Rapid uh, Mirror, in the Vaccine matchup, this is actually really killer. For at least a turn. Which, you know what, one turn could be all you need, and I think the artwork's killer as well. But I don't know. Turning a Rapid into another Rapid for three is kind of like whatever a lot of the time, unless you're going into Rapid X. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on uh, Sparkle of Fate down in the description. I, I don't think it's a bad one of, but I just don't think the deck really needs it. Probably the best feature is probably the security effect, right? Getting a free Terriamon and then adding this to him. Anyway, that's the end of the profile. Let me know what you think down in the comments, what you've tested in BT16 if you have, and what you find efficient. And yeah, let me know what you're going to play going forward. Because I'm really enjoying this build, and yeah, Terriamon, best deck. I'll catch you guys next time.